ओके वेलकम ऑल टू लॉ सीखो थरो न्यूज पेपर एनालिसिस फॉर थर्ड अक्टूबर ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी थ्री नाउ आज का एजेंडा इन द एडिटोरियल सेक्शन वील बी स्पीकिंग एंड वील बी गेटिंग गेटिंग एन एक्सप्लेनेशन फॉर पुश फॉर मोर वुमेन दिस टाइम इन द पुलिस दिस वी हैव टेकन फ्रॉम द हिंदू and then uh, as per the schedule we will be discussing about the news update which is the national news international news important days awards and sports and lastly we'll be discussing about the legal news update theek hai chale ab push for more women this time in the police as per the name suggest uh, we are talking about the more reservation percentage for women in the police authorities and just a clarificatory remarks i'll be trying to explain every news and the editorial more in the english language and if i use some hindi sentences or language for explanation of any news or editorial i will repeat the particular sentence again in the english for the students who understand only english and i'll be making sure that the explanation is given to you in both the languages correctly चलिए इन द फ्यू इयर्स फ्रॉम नाउ द वुमेन लॉ मेकर्स विल फॉर्म एटलीस्ट थर्टी थ्री परसेंट ऑफ लॉ मेकर्स इन इंडिया नाउ देर इज अ रेलिवेंट कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनल अमेंडमेंट हियर विच इज ऑन वन हंड्रेड एंड ट्वेंटी एट अमेंडमेंट बिल ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी थ्री विच हैज बीन पास बाय बोथ हाउसेज ऑफ पार्लियामेंट नाउ पहले हम ये समझते हैं क्या दैट वॉट दिस बिल प्रोवाइड फॉर ठीक है लेट अस अंडरस्टैंड फर्स्ट दैट वॉट दिस बिल प्रोवाइड फॉर that one third of the total seats in the lok sabha the legislative assembly of e every state and legislative assembly of ncp of delhi to be reserved for a woman for 15 years theek hai and the reservation will also extend to the seats reserved for st and sc candidates in lok sabha and state legislative assemblies now ab hum pehle let us discuss the current reservation scenario the current reservation scenario in the lok sabha is about 14.4% compared to 4.9% in the first lok sabha which held in 1952 now when the amendment came there might be a purpose of this particular amendment so the purpose of this amendment is to increase the women's participation in the policy making however as the amendment has caveats expert are of view that the earliest this amendment can be implemented is of is the general election of 2029 provided census of 2021 jo pending hai which is due can be taken place and jo delimitation process start hoti hai wo bhi ho sake otherwise if this does not happen the delimitation and the uh, process of delimitation will be delayed for the next general election that would be 2034 theek hai now while there is no direct link uh, between the number of legislator and the strength of law enforcement agencies and the number of women in this uh the number of women in this gives a fair idea about how representative this institutions are of society they present now अब हम लोग बात करते हैं दैट व्हाट इज द रिजर्वेशन इन द डिफरेंट स्टेट्स एंड देयर स्टैटिस्टिक्स डेटा व्हिच इज कमिंग फ्रॉम डेटा ऑफ पुलिस ऑर्गेनाइजेशंस सो मोस्ट स्टेट्स जनरली हैव द पॉलिसी दैट 30 टू 33 परसेंट जो भी वेकेंट सीट्स रहेंगी विथ वुमेन इन दर पुलिस फोर्सेस थ्रू हॉरिजोंटल रिजर्वेशन If the minimum reservation vacant uh, positions uh, are not filled in each category of STs and SC and other backward classes and unreserved with women on merit, women candidates are pushed up in the list to make up for the gap. So we just talked about the reservation category, how much percentage it is there, and what type of reservation is it horizontal or it is vertical. now women are generally recruited against the notified vacancies after permission is granted by the government now there is a data coming from the police organization which is uh, published by the bureau of police research and development which shows that the total available strength of state police forces increased by about 7.48% in the last 5 years theek hai Through the data for the year twenty twenty one has not been published, the Minister of State of Home Affairs informed the Rajya Sabha in twenty twenty three that the reservation that the representation of women in the police force remained at eleven point seven percent of the total state police force. 
Now, we have the data which is coming from the different states as well. So let us look uh, of the data which is uh, as on January 2021. States like Kerala, Mizoram, Goa, uh, they don't have any policy for the reservation of women in the police force. But women representation in the states varies between 6 to 11 percent. So this type of state does not have any policy for the women rep representation in the police. Okay. Now the data coming from Bihar, which provides for 35% of reservation for women and 3% for backward caste women. But the actual number of the women in the force is only about 17%. Now Chandigarh, which is has the maximum percentage of women is 22% in the police force. While Jammu and Kashmir has the minimum, which is 3.3%. Himachal Pradesh has not notified any reservation for women, but 20% uh, vacancies for constables are filled up by the women. So the Ministry of Home Affairs has repeatedly asked states to increase the representation of women in police up to 33%. Many states do not have a permanent police recruitment board and do not have a free hand to undertake recruitment at regular levels. Now, let us consider and compare this particular data with the crime data. And why there is a need for more women force right now. So with the criminal law and criminal procedure on the concurrent list, the central government has made various amendments in this laws. Okay, so any uh, category in uh, which uh, it is there in the concurrent list, both the central and the state government can make the laws. So in this, the central government has made the laws and the reports and the statements are to be mandatorily recorded by the women police officer. So you will find many provisions in the criminal law and the IPC where many, um, many uh, statute provisions and procedural requirement requires a woman police officer, right? Arrest and search of a woman accused must be done by a woman police officer. So NCRB data, that is National Crime Record Bureau, about 10% of total crime defined under IPC was committed against women and about 5.3% of total arrested person in 2021 were women. So what it states that 10% of crime commit hai, hai, wo women ne commit kiye the, and 5.3% of arrest Woman now, the available women force was insufficient even in dealing with cases related to women. POXO Act was, has further enlarged the scope of women recruitment in the police force. So, look, in the many criminal law provisions, in many um, you know, procedural requirements, arrest, or in fact, recording statement, women police officers are required. So, statutory provisions, ke hisab se bhi, we need women police officers more on the board. Now, police being a state subject in the seventh schedule of the constitution and implementation of police reforms remains primarily concerned of the state. Now, Ministry of Home Affairs began providing financial incentives uh, from 2018-19 to states which are, uh, you know, implementing the police reforms in a statutory level. Similarly, to the establishment of police recruitment board was another such reform and many states were not enthusiastic about implementing this and consequently did not get the benefit. Now, Ministry of Home Affairs also provided a special grant to encourage states to establish a woman desk in every police station. But there were not enough women personnel to handle them in the, handle them in the district. Uh, the ministry have also given a special provision in the modernization plan to build separate toilets for women staff and ensure the crutch facilities. Now, there are many things which are required on ground on the practical sphere so that we can implement this particular policy of the government. Uh, for this, a conductive environment and a basic infrastructure are minimum necessity. A Uniform Police Act for the entire country may help the center frame uniform standards for women police also. Every state should have a recruitment board to ensure recruitment on a regular basis. And taking a step forward, a special drive should also be conducted and it should be launched on all the states and UTs to recruit more women and increase their representation in women force just as the constitutional 128 amendment for women in legislatures would do in the future. So, uh, you know, a very phenomenal step 
are being taken by the government when it comes to policy makers when it comes to representation in police force when it comes to giving us statutory recognition when it comes to having an employment opportunity when it comes to having a skill development of women so i think it would be a very positive move if we give a minimum reservation category to the women for preservation in police force and that would certainly help in implementing the criminal procedure in a better way so yes it's a very revolutionary step and uh, when it comes to dialogue and conversation it would certainly give a different edge uh, to the women in the country so yes it's a phenomenal move uh, by the government chaliye let us start with the national news of the day uh, which is coming from the state bihar to establish second tiger reserve in kemo district abhi humne recently madhya pradesh ki news padi thi jahan pe do merger hua tha wild life reserve ka मेरे को जरूर बताइएगा उन दोनों का जो मर्जर होके नाम हुआ था व्हाट वाज़ द नेम ऑफ दैट पर्टिकुलर रिजर्व व्हिच वाज मर्ज इन मध्य प्रदेश वी रिसेंटली स्टडीड इन द प्रीवियस टीएनए सो द प्रेजेंट न्यूज इज बिहार इज प्रिपेयरिंग टू एस्टेब्लिश इट्स सेकंड टाइगर रिजर्व विद इन द कैमो डिस्ट्रिक्ट एंड इट विल बी कॉम्प्लीमेंट द एग्जिस्टिंग वाल्मीकि टाइगर रिजर्व लोकेटेड इन द वेस्ट चंपारण डिस्ट्रिक्ट ऑफ बिहार now um as per the recent report bihar currently boasts a total tiger population of 54 and it's a very remarkable growth in the uh, coming uh, near future the ab now let us discuss about the landscape of kamur kamur is a uh, geography plays a vital role in the decision to establish a tiger reserve dekhiye whenever tiger reserve is established we need to see the geographical location as well okay so it is divided into two re regions one is the hilly area known as the kamur plateau and the plain area on the western side flanked up by the rivers uh, karnasa and durgavati it has also very substantial forest cover including expansive kamur wildlife sanctuary and which is uh, it shares the boundaries with jharkhand uttar pradesh madhya pradesh so it's a very critical geographical location for establishing the tiger reserve which is in the district which is known as kamur now and now let us discuss some exam takeaways here now tiger reserve is an officially designated and protected area to safeguard the tigers by the name we can understand that to reserve the tiger the particular uh, place is dedicated for the preservation of them now around 82% of world tiger live in india it's a very big percentage that out of 100 82% tiger live in india and in the 1973 it's a very important thing please make it uh, you know uh, you know remember this point in 1973 the project tiger was launched by indira gandhi government from the jim corbett national park which is situated in uttarakhand for increasing the population of tiger now at present there are 53 reserves are located in 2022 53 tiger reserve was declared in ranipur wildlife sanctuary in uttar pradesh which is the state's third uh reserve okay now uh bihar's first tiger reserve was valmiki tiger reserve which is the 18th tiger reserve in india valmiki tiger reserve is located in west champaran and valmiki tiger reserve is also known as wildlife sanctuary which is valmiki wildlife sanctuary and national park was established in 1990 so a very good news coming from the state of bihar yaad rakhiyega please remember this point Uh, a second tiger reserve in kaimur district army launches project darpan and project spears for transforming lives now army has signed a tripartite mou uh, okay then uh, which, uh, they are coming up with project darpan which is dao and rising sun preparatory academy in um, any which is northeastern and project spears that is selection and preparation for employment in army for rising sun okay now indian army has signed an mou between indian army uh, nido and oil india limited and coal india limited aims to provide the value based education to the underprivileged children of upper assam theek hai now uh, the indian army has also this to uh, the the de novo initiative aims at establishing a major educational hub in uh, the the brugar district to prepare children for weaker section of society for nd and cds exams now the project let us understand the project will run under the aegis of indian army eastern command 
under the supervision of dau division at uh, the brugger now let us uh, now let us please tell me the tna question of the day okay so do answer the particular question um, particular answer of this question in the comment box and we are sending we have started giving uh, you know some good giveaways to the students so which article of the indian constitution provide for the duty of the state to promote educational and economic interest of the weaker section do tell me in the comment box chale next news india concludes women military officers course for asian countries so let us understand pehle asian kya hota hai what is asian so asian is an association of south eastern asian nations or asians or it was established hua tha it was established in bangkok thailand on 8 august 1967 okay now uh, with the signing of asian declaration bangkok declaration by the founding fathers of asian that is indonesia malaysia philippines singapore and thailand india's relationship with asia has emerged as a very important key cornerstone for our foreign policy and the relationship has evolved a very important policy which is the look east policy okay and which led india to become a sectoral partner of asian in 1992 a dialogue partner in 1996 and summit level partner in 2002 so yaad rakhiyega please do remember look east policy due to the asian uh, when we uh, conglomerated with the asian now what is this news all about so um, the india competed is women military officers course uh, which for, from asian countries and the indian army the effort was organized by the defense ministry and was it was based on united nations framework the training was particularly intended uh, for providing and improving the female officers leadership ability strategic intelligence operational efficacy while also providing a rich platform for cross culture engagement and mutual professional growth theek hai chaliye india slips fourth spots to 56th position in 2023 world talent ranking okay india has slipped down four places in the world talent rank ranking international institute for management development has released this ranking ye jo particular ranking hai ye international institute of management development bring karta hai ab ye dekhiye let us see in 2023 among the 64 economies of the world india has slipped down to fourth place to 56th position out of 64 country our ranking is 56th position In the year 2022, India was on 52nd position. ठीक है. Now let us understand what are the factors which are considered while giving this ranking. Okay. So quality of life, minimum wage, primary, secondary education. India ranks 29th in the future readiness. However, in the report, Indian education system is said to be weak and is ranked 63rd out of 64th. uh students please note it that the ranking is very important they have given the ranking for future readiness they have given the ranking for uh, the education system now what the upcoming imd has several upcoming reports planned including the sustainable trade index which is in october and world digital competitive ranking in november okay so these are the upcoming things now the exam takeaways for you guys the imd world talent ranking 2023 now who has topped this particular list switzerland has topped while luxembourg was in second place followed by iceland belgium and netherlands united states ki ranking hai 15 the us ranking is 15th and china is at 41st place uk is at 35 brazil 63rd mongolia 64th Up, occupy the bottom two spots. ठीक है. So the world talent ranking India ranks fifty sixth in twenty twenty three. Now advertising standard council of India appoints new chairman. So the advertising standard council of India has appointed Sau Gata Gupta, who is would be who is the MD and the CEO of Mario Marico Limited as the new chairman of advertising wing standards council of India. ठीक है नाउ लेट अस अंडरस्टैंड द एग्जाम टेक अवे एडवर्टाइजिंग स्टैंडर्ड काउंसिल ऑफ इंडिया व्हिच इज फॉर्म्ड इन 1985 बाय प्रोफेशनल्स फ्रॉम द एडवर्टाइजिंग एंड मीडिया इंडस्ट्री टू कीप द इंडियन एड्स डिसेंट फेयर एंड ऑनेस्ट 
It's a regulatory voluntary organization of the advertising industry with an objective of maintaining and enhancing the public confidence in advertising. In 2023, the organization code was updated with guidelines for the education sector, charitable causes, health, financial influencers, etc. Okay, so advertising Standard Council of India has appointed Saugata Gupta as the new chairman. Now, Women Reservation Bill gets President SN becomes law. A phenomenal landmark thing for India. The Women Reservation Bill uh, has uh, bought the President Ascent, which seeks to provide 33% of reservation to women in Lok Sabha and State Assembly. The bill was instituted by Meghwal in Lok Sabha on September 19, and it was passed by Rajya Sabha on September 21. Now, it will be officially known as the Constitution 106th Amendment Act, According to the gazetted notification, it shall come into force on such date as the central government may my notification officially gazetted appoint. Now, bill does not require ratification by the state since it does not change the actual number of seats that the states have in the parliament. Now, called the Nari Shakti Vandan Abhyan, the act provided 33% reservation to women in the Lok Sabha and State Legislative Assembly, becoming the first bill to be passed in the new building, new parliament building. So, I will tell you new parliament building ka naam kya hai. New parliament building ka naam kya diya gaya hai. And uh, the seats already reserved for SCs and ST will also come within the preview of Women Reservation Bill. Okay. The upper house has earlier passed the Women Reservation Bill in 2010 during the Congress-led UPA government, but it was not taken up in the Lok Sabha and subsequently lapsed. Now, to understand the Women Reservation Bill in a more exhaustive way uh, and uh, to understand all the historical background behind this particular bill, please refer to our TNA, which is for September 19, 2023. So if you want to understand in a more exhaustive way, do watch our TNA for 19 September 2023. Shall I? Shall I? Next, India retains 40th rank in the Global Innovation Index 2023. Okay. So India out of 132 economies has been ranked 48th in the Global Innovation Index 2023. Now, as per the Niti Aayog, the consistent improvement in the GII ranking is owing to the immense knowledge capital, the vibrant startup ecosystem, and work done by the public and private research organization. Now, the Confederation of Indian Industry has also been collaborating in India's journey towards an innovation-driven economy. This year, Niti Aayog, in partnership with CII and the World Intellectual Property Organization, virtually hosted the India launch of GII 2023 on 29 September. So Global Innovation Index ranks 48th Indian uh, out of 132 economies. Shall I? Next, the rankings 2024 IISC ranked best in India, Oxford University best in the world. So chaliye. Now we education sector. Ki baat karte the top university in India is the Indian Institute of Science, has returned to the global top 250, coming in the 201-250 band for the first time since 2017. Okay, and the, the second highest ranked university in India are Anna University, Jamia Amelia Islamia, Mahatma Gandhi University, Shulini University of Biotechnology and Management Sciences, which are in the band of 501 to 600 band. Okay. Now, as for the ranking 2024, the UK's university, which is Oxford, is the highest ranked university in the world with Stanford University taking second place, making it US top ranked university and third place is Massachusetts Institute of Technology. So IISC ranked best in India, coming in 201 to 250 band. Next, Bharatiya Bhasha Utsav, a 75-day long event to celebrate Indian languages start in Lucknow. It's a 75-day long event to celebrate Indian languages, which has started being from Lucknow. Okay, and Padma Shri awardees and representative of different Indian languages are taken part in the program, which includes Bahu Bhashi Sanghoshti, that is multi-language conference and play based on Ramayana. Next, India's first cartography museum inaugurated in 
Masuri. So it's a for celebrating the World Tourism Day, the Ministry of Tourism in Uttarakhand has officially opened India's first cartography museum, which will be known as Sir George Everest Museum, and additionally he inaugurated a new helipad in George Everest, Masuri. Now cartography. What is cartography? Cartography is an art, science, technology of making and using map. Okay, cartography is an art, science, technology using map. Now, uh, the Part State Museum located in Hatipau area of Masur was once the dwelling of the renowned surveyor Sir George Everest, after whom Mount Everest is named. Now, honoring the mathematical pioneer Radnath Shikhar, the minister has. Uh, Christian a uh, helipad at a George Everest state in tribute to brilliant mathematician Radha Nath Sikhdar. Sikhdar achieved a remarkable feat of calculating the height of the world highest peak Mount Everest for the first time in history in 1852. Now, the newly inaugurated George Everest Cartography Museum is a unique institution. It is dedicated to preserving the rich history of cartography, surveying and mountaineering. Now it's a first cartography museum located in Masuri. India versus uh, India at Asian Games. Palak defeats Asia to win gold. Scripting history for India. Palak Gulia and Asia Singh competed with each other for the top podium finish at 10 meter air pistol shooting in Hangzhou. Palak Gulia won gold medal and Asia Singh settled with silver. So next, chale. mission to Venus already configured. ISRO chairman post. Chandrayaan 3 plans. Now, uh, the ISRO are landed uh, Chandrayaan 3 on the moon and successfully roped over 100 meters round. It has now set on a new target, which is Venus. Confirming the development, uh, the chairman S. Somnath Sir has said that India's mission to Venus, the biggest, the brightest planet in our solar system, has been configured. Now, what is this mission all about? It is officially known as Shukrayaan from Sanskrit, Sanskrit word Shukra and Yana, that is craft vehicle, is expected to launch in this coming years. It will focus on to study and the surface and atmosphere of Venus, the thick filled acids. Now, mission to Venus in 2016, the European Space Agency carried out Venus, Venus mission, Venus Express, which orbited from 2006 to 2016. Even Japan. Akta Suki Venus Climate Orbiter executed a mission to the planet which has been orbiting since 2016. NASA has undertaken several flyby and other missions to Venus. It announced in 2022 that its spacecraft captured the first visible light images of Venus in 2021. So our ISRO mission uh, for Venus has been configured. CBIL first Indian firm to make silicon carbide chip starts units in Mohali. Okay, now the Continental Device India Private Limited has become the first company to start silicon carbide chips used in electric vehicles and power electronics in India. So it's a very uh, science and technology related news. Now, uh, the CDIL Semiconductor, which claims to be the first company to introduce silicon semiconductor technology in India, has also partnered with the government semiconductor laboratory in Mohali. With a rapid demand from EV manufacturers as well as suppliers of power management devices and solar powered panels, SIC devices have emerged as a critical component. So, silicon carbide chips coming, uh, the unit has been started in Mohali. Next, uh, so uh, it's a time to study some important days of 2023. Now, October 2nd, World Habitat Day, we have celebrated, which is first Monday of the month of October. Now, its history is it is celebrated in Nairobi, Canada in 1986. And the theme was Shelter is My Right. Shelter is My Right. As per United Nations 2023, theme is resilient urban economies cities as drivers of growth and recovery so the uh, the theme of that year in 1986 when it was first celebrated was shelter is my right and for this year resilient in urban economies cities as drivers of growth and recovery nine let us understand the significance of this particular day people raise awareness of the rights of people to have their own homes 
the importance of environmental conservation is also discussed and the need of proper houses for everyone is also discussed on this particular day world habitat day 2023 international news ki taraf badhte hain iss to retire in 2031 nasa initiates plan to bring it back to earth so nasa recently unveiled how it is planning to retire iss that that, that is international space station which is a unique space station currently in lower earth orbit space station facilitate collaborative project involving five participating space agencies which is roscosmos jaxa esa and csa now nasa has told that iss to retire in 2031 and it is planning to bring back it to uh, earth scientists have and researchers have used this particular space station for more than 20 years to research biological physical biomedicine materials earth space science on 444615 kg gigantic structure okay so it's a largest artificial object in space and it's a largest satellite in lower earth orbit next glaciers in switzerland lose 10% of their ice volumes in 2 years so guys it's a big 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 uh, you know a signal a red flag for the climate change that is happening and how we need as citizens to get aware on how we can protect our mother earth so nepali glaciers in switzerland are shrinking have lost a total of 10% of their ice volume over a period of 2 years as a combination of low snowfall and soaring temperature which caught unprecedented melting swiss glaciers have lost as much as ice over this two year period as was lost over the three decades so it has been compared to the three decade of the loss of the uh, ice the two extreme years have led to glacier tongues collapsing and many small glaciers in the country disappearing together next iran successfully launches new military satellite into orbit say state media the iran revolutionary guards carried out a successful launch of third military satellite on wednesday they have confirmed and the media has confirmed now because of this the tension are being rising in the west the us military has said that the long range ballistic technology used by iran to launch satellite may also enable to launch long range weapons possibly possibly even nuclear warheads iran uh, denies the us assertion that activity like satellite launch is a cover for in for development of ballistic missiles i maintain that it has never pursued development for nuclear weapons theek hai the country has suffered several failed attempts to launch satellite due to technical issues so iran ne has successfully launched a new military satellite into orbit because of this particular satellite the skeptical positions are that they might uh, use it for the development of nuclear weapons which was denied by iran and uh, it has caused the tension in the west due to this germany israel sign historic 3.5 billion dollar missile shield deal germany has signed a deal to acquire the israeli made arrow 3 hypersonic missile system that will become a key part of europe's defense against air attack it is worth about 3.3 billion euros and the sale is the biggest ever deal for israel's military industry the aero 3 system would make german air defense ready for the future okay germany has led to push to bolster nato's air defense in europe after russia's full scale invasion of ukraine last year urging allies to buy a deterrent system all together so this was about the the news coming from germany and israel signing historical deal now the next news of the international section taiwan launch its first domestically built submarine the taiwan has launched the first domestically built submarine um, in a in a milestone for a self rule island defense capabilities president the sai ing wen launched the vessel named haikun so ye jo domestically built submarine hai uska naam kya hai uska naam hai haikun which is meaning is called as mythical sea creature on thursday into the harbor of kaohsiung taiwan southern port city okay so first submarine should be ready for delivery by the end of 2024 with a second plan for completion by 2027 
Now, what kind of submarines are built? The government aims to build eight diesel-powered submarines to bulk out Taiwan's existing fleet of two Dutch-made models from 1980s and World War II era. Now, I uh, the, the the news that is coming has stating being that if China angle is there, the submarines could keep China's navy from encircling Taiwan and cutting the island off from outside thing outside resources to move China. Would be expected to make it if it were an attack or invade the island. So, Thai, uh, so Taiwan has launched first domestically built uh, submarine, which is named Haikun, meaning mythical sea creature. Now, coming up with a legal update, update for the day, which is coming from the Honorable Supreme Court in the case of Mrs. Powell Rubber Industries Private Limited versus Amit Chand Mitra and another. So, this particular case is all about the Transfer of Property Act under Section 106. Owners on tenant to prove that premises was leased for manufacturing. So, uh, the Supreme Court comprising uh, Justice Anirudha Bose, Justice Vikram Nath has said that, has held that, that in order to attract Section 106 of the Transfer of Property Act, what it requires, it requires six months notice for termination of lease. The burden is on the tenant. So it's, it, it said about the burden of proof is on the tenant to that the manufacturing activity was being carried out on in lease premises. A mere statement that the manufacturing activity was being done would not suffice and the tenant must explain the nature of work being done in the factory shed. So it talks about the burden of proof under section 106 of the Transfer of Property Act, which is on tenant and it was held in the case of Mrs. Paul Rubber Industries Private Limited versus Amit Chand, Mitra and others. Now coming up to the next uh, news update, uh, which includes, uh, which is coming from the, again from the Honorable Supreme Court in the case of Rajneesh Kumar Rai versus Union of India cannot ignore racial lead in an earlier judgment merely because it stands referred to a larger bench. The court held that it cannot ignore the ratio led down in an earlier judgment merely because the same stands referred to a larger bench. Uh, so the bench was comprised pr comprising of Justice Anirudh Bose and Justice Bela Trivedi and held that judicial propriety did not permit it, ignoring the ratio let down in the earlier judgment as no decision regarding the same had come out from the larger bench. And this matter was pertaining to the Central Administrative Tribunal, Hyderabad, which sought a transfer to Ahmedabad bench of the same tribunal. And it noted that the matter had reached the final stage of hearing and the transfer was sought by the petitioner in the matter who himself had instituted the suit. So it held in Rajneesh Kumar Rai was Union of India and others. Merely asking someone to go die, not abatement of suicide, words uttered in spur of moment don't, don't show mensria. It's a very important case coming from the Telangana High Court in the case of Changam Ravindar versus State of AP. And it states that merely uttering go and die would not amount to instigation as defined under Section 306 of IPC, which is abatement of suicide. And the word exchange during an argument are said in the spur of the moment and cannot be considered as mens rea, which is held by the Honorable Judges Division Bench of Justice K. Lakshmanan and Justice K. Sujana. And they reiterated that it can be um, uttered in the spur of moment and they, do know, they don't show mens rea. So coming from very important judgment, coming from Telangana High Court, please keep a note of it. Now, I think that's uh, again, a legal update coming from the Kerala High Court in the case of Anthony Joseph versus the sub registrar. Not all divorces have to be mutual. Nature of previous divorce irrelevant to permit marriage under Special Marriage Act. Now, the Kerala High Court has recently was looking into the registering authority does not have to look into the nature of divorce obtained by the parties while considering their marriage application under Section 8 of the Special Marriage Act. Now, 
the case involved a couple seeking to marry under special marriage act and their application was denied by the sub registrar and which cited the lack of sufficient evidence to prove that both parties were single and without living spouses a requirement under section 8 of the act it was said that they did not prove that they dissolved their previous marriage by mutual consent so the kerala high court have said that no law mandates that all divorces have to be obtained by mutual consent it is not the nature of the divorce which is relevant but the factum of such having been obtained by the parties to the intended marriage validity so the court said that nature of previous divorce is irrelevant to permit a couple to marry under section 8 of the special marriage act coming from the kerala high court I think that's all for the news update and the legal news update and the editorial section. I hope you like it. Keep learning. Take care and thank you for watching.